For a lot of you guys out there, Fortnite is the first shooter you've laid your hands on. You may have started off casual, but the game's evolved to a point where the competitive scene is massive and still growing. Cash prizes are given out weekly, the competition is fierce, and anybody can be included. What's good guys, my name is Dan, and if you're looking to get more involved in competitive Fortnite, here are five crucial things you need to know if you want to find success. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuides.com where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players. We're talking like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. And be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We really appreciate it. Probably the biggest difference between casual and competitive play is the emphasis put on survival. When you're playing casual matches, it doesn't really matter if you die. You won't lose points or miss out on anything, and you can just queue up for the next game no problem. But in competitive modes, every game matters if you want to do well. In arena, you gotta pay points for bus fare, which can really add up after multiple games. And in tournaments like cash cups or the FNCS qualifiers, the number of games is limited. You won't be able to just keep queuing. You gotta give it your all in every game. So because of this, players in competitive matches take each game much more seriously. They play mainly for the end goal of surviving. And with that, a lot more thought gets put into taking engagements. Players and teams will consider things like, can we get these kills and still rotate safely to zone? Or should I keep looting for better gear before pushing this enemy? If the circumstances don't align, they'll typically play passively and wait for a better moment. By taking a fight without a starting advantage, the risk is just so much higher than it needs to be. Remember, in all competitive modes, skill-based matchmaking exists. Players are much closer to your skill level and can put up a solid fight, so you need a strong edge if you're going to engage. Things like sneaking on a rooftop so you can spot your opponent first, or even positioning to hold enemies in the storm. These decisional plays make a serious impact on the outcome of a fight, and they're more important than you might think. Just take a look at this example from one of Tifu's qualifier matches the other night. He spots an enemy team, but doesn't engage right away. He instead first asks his team if they're ready. Once backup arrives, they initiate a 3-2-1 countdown so they can all shoot at once for some serious damage. And it works! They crack the guy's shields and get him super low. Now, in arena or pub matches, most of us would just push and force the fight. But look at the situation here. The enemy team posts up on a small hill and now has the high ground advantage. Not only that, but the next safe zone hasn't been revealed yet. It could potentially require a long run. Even though they got some damage in, the circumstances aren't really in our squad's favor here. Maybe if they got a knock on the player, they would have pushed. But they didn't, so they'd rather not take the risk and simply back off instead. So guys, survival trumps all other aspects when it comes to competitive. Before taking each engagement or decision, think about how it'll impact you and your chances of surviving, because making sure you can reach the end game and earn points from placements is critical if you're looking to improve. Well, you've probably noticed that competitive matches have a lot more players alive at any given point, especially during the end game. We're talking upwards of 30, 40, or 50 players alive in these really small circles. As you might have experienced or seen, trying to survive until the next safe zone during this phase is straight up brutal. So two things are very important when it comes to surviving here, mobility items and positioning. Now I know most of you are probably saying, there's no mobility in the game right now, and yes, you're totally right. Other than giving us boats, Epic responded with a hard no to mobility this season, but it won't stay that way forever. We're bound to see mobility make a comeback at some point. Pro players usually run one or two mobility items in their loadouts. If you've just been a casual player up until this point, you might not have used mobility often in your games. And that's not necessarily bad or anything. They definitely have less value in pub matches. But in these stacked endgames, positioning is key. You need to stay ahead of the storm and set up in safe areas to avoid getting held. And mobility items, <coughs> when they exist, are the easiest ways to simply move and avoid disaster in the endgame. Always carry them with you when you can. But for right now, since mobility is sadly gone, tunneling is probably the most important building technique to get down. Before Chapter 2, when it was the 7th or 8th circle, you could just toss a shockwave grenade at your feet and end up ahead of everyone. But now, you've got to rotate as soon as possible, and use tunneling in to cover yourself from enemies. If there's one building technique you need to really know for competitive, it's tunneling. Teamwork's arguably one of the most impactful areas of competitive play. 
I know, I know, there are solos where you got no teamwork. That's true, but it's always been required if you want to be successful in team-based modes. Individual mechanics play far less of a role, and how your team works together starts to matter a whole lot more. In solos, you can make choices and not have to worry about the team aspect. Like, you can push every player and you won't have to deal with being ganged up on. Or you can go loot somewhere and not have to worry about leaving your team behind. But in larger modes, if you're not working with your team, you'll lose to any opponents that are. Think about it this way. What good does some crazy phase sway high ground retake do against a team that sticks together and focuses their gunfire on you? Nothing! They'll break through your builds and kill you in no time. But if instead, you stay close to your team and maybe push them together, they won't be able to focus you down as easily. So sticking together plays a gigantic role. Not necessarily all the time, since splitting up can be useful for looting or for endgame control, but in most scenarios, it matters a ton. You've gotta be close by so you can help each other out. If two enemies are focusing down one of your teammates, not being there to help is a mistake. A big mistake that's typically worse than messing up your builds or whiffing a shot. In terms of communicating with your team, there's the role of in-game leader or IGL that each team usually has. The IGL has the job of making calls and instructing the team on things like rotating, disengaging, regrouping, taking fights, and inventory management. Because with four players on a team, things can get hectic. You can't all be making decisions or else everyone's going to start doing their own thing. And that's when teams start to crumble. The rest of your team needs to listen to their IGL. Even if you think the call might not work, you got to follow it. The full team not committing can often ruin strats, so you can't be that guy that doesn't follow them. But everyone else can make their own callouts too. In a team setting, communication is key. It's kind of a skill in itself, really. Letting your teammates know things like if you've got an enemy low, if you need mats or ammo, or how hard you're committing to a kill are all calls that can impact your game. So if you're thinking of playing in the FNCS this season, knowing proper teamwork and communication is vital. When in doubt, stick with your team, make impactful callouts, and make sure you're listening for them too. If you're trying to improve at the game, but maybe you feel like you've hit a brick wall, one of the biggest tips we can give you is to recognize your mistakes and learn from them. Every time you die, take a lot of damage, or lose a match, chances were that you could have done something differently for a better result. Whether it was taking a better position, building more, disengaging the fight, not peeking the way you did, the list goes on. Because truth be told, we see plenty of players put in the time but never see improvement. And a big reason is that they don't take responsibility. They'll die and blame the game, or even blame the enemy player in some cases. Which sometimes makes us laugh. Like, why is the enemy to blame if they won the fight? Kinda silly when you think about it. Sure, there are times when bad luck can screw you over, but there are always things that you can do differently to prevail. Guys, if you can't recognize your misplays, you'll never ever learn from them. So recognizing them is the first step. Realize that you aren't perfect and that you make mistakes and that's fine. And with each loss, go over the decisions that led to defeat. Ask yourself, what could I have done differently, and think of a few choices. If you do that, you're bound to learn something that can help you play better in the future. And this mindset still comes into action even more so once you start playing competitively. Like if you begin playing arena games, the first couple or several thousand points can be gathered just by doing what you've learned instinctively. But eventually, you'll reach a point where your skill level can't improve that way. Your opponents will be just as good as you if not better, so you'll have to start fixing mistakes to improve. Pro players do this all the time. They even load up replays so that they can get a better idea of what went wrong. Obviously, you don't need to load up a replay for every death. But for those deaths where you're having trouble seeing the full picture, replays are a wonderful tool to use. Regardless of how you do it, if you can accept responsibility and start thinking about your losses, you'll start noticing errors. Then you can come up with ways to avoid them. And ultimately, you'll start improving. Self-analysis isn't the only thing you need to improve and compete. You also have to follow and adapt to metas. Metas are essentially strategies that become important to follow if you want to play at a high level. I'm talking about like when new items, mechanics, or playstyles are introduced. If they're really strong or found to be beneficial in some way, you gotta learn how to use them. With how often the game's updated, this is especially true in Fortnite, but it holds true in other games as well. Not following the meta can potentially ruin your chances of seeing any improvement. If you straight up refuse to use an item everyone else says is good because you don't like it, you're only limiting yourself. Like when Ninja refused to use double pumps, I don't know if you guys remember way back to like season 4 or something, but back then running two pump shotguns was the meta. Ninja famously refused to use them since he personally didn't enjoy using them. But eventually, after dying to so many double pumpers, he got fed up and switched to the dark side. Or what about these new strategies with Chapter 2's fishing mechanic? 
You can survive in the storm pretty much till the end of the game, as seen in this clip here from a player named Wonder. If your squad loots a ton of fish and heal items in slurpy swamps, you can just sit there and heal up when needed. With this clever strat, teams are gaining points for free without fighting any players. Or even without that specific strat, we're seeing plenty of pros play the last seconds of their matches in the storm now. Since fish and bandage bazookas can keep you alive for a ridiculous amount of time, it's actually safer to stay in the storm so you can avoid enemy players. Vivid does it here and ends up earning 10 points by himself just healing in the storm. Pretty crazy, right? We could go on with more examples, but what we're trying to say with all this is how beneficial it is to follow metas and what other players are doing. Try to spend time watching pros and think about their gameplay choices. Get involved with the community by joining competitive discords or online discussions. Oh, and keep watching our channel! We'll always keep you guys posted on what's relevant, because if you don't take steps to learn new things, you're putting yourself at a serious disadvantage. If you're hesitant about joining the competitive scene, we get that. High-level games can seem really intense, but they are a blast to play. And if you follow our tips, it doesn't matter if you're just starting off. As long as you have the right mentality, you can improve. And maybe, just maybe, one day go pro. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES when you make any sort of purchases. It really helps us out, and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought of this video and what you'd like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Once again, it's your host, Dan. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Ammerman, and we'll see you on the next one.